Hey YouTube, welcome back to my lathe taper attachment. I thought I'd take a, a few big steps back and uh, just go through how this thing is meant to work, how I built it, and uh, how I set it up on the lathe. To be quite honest, when I first did this, I didn't think it was anything, you know, overly spectacular. Um, but given the amount of, of interest and, and views and questions that I've gotten, uh, I thought I'd take a moment and, and just recap this. That's sort of the, you know, when I first built this and did that, the first video, everything so, sort of, to me, seemed um, somewhat self-evident. Uh, it's a very basic design by its nature. I just, I just had something that I needed to cut a taper, had some material, and I did more of a show-and-tell video. That's why I didn't get into very many of the details. But maybe it merits just a little bit more. So as I said in that first video, uh, the construction of this is, I think, a little bit of overkill. Um, it's material that I had on hand at the time. I'm, sh I'm sure it could be made you know, a little bit lighter than this if you were, say, buying new material or didn't want to go through working with such uh, heavy stock. But there's, there's, there's essentially just three fundamental parts to this. Uh, this bottom frame that you see that gets attached to the lathe itself so I can rotate this up. I have four holes in here. Um, they're not half inch. They're probably 10 millimeter or so, three eighths of an inch. The reason it's got four holes, I mean, I use all four locations, but what that lets me do is take the bolts out and kind of move this one set of holes or two set of holes in different directions along the, the lathe bed, depending on where on the lathe I, I need to cut that the taper but just to, just assume that that's two or three holes for now enough to keep this very rigid to uh, to the lathe the lathe body the second part is just this uh, this little connector bar let's call it like a essentially like a drag linkage and again it's, it's full of holes probably more than I needed but I didn't really lay this out I kind of built it on the fly uh, and I didn't know which would coincide uh, with the uh, cross slide. Maybe that'll make more sense when, when we hook this up. And this just has a, a big bronze bushing that allows it to slide across the guide bar. And the third part, I guess, I mean they're all important, but I guess the, the major attraction here is, is the actual guide bar that sets the angles. Now this is just a, it looks like about a one inch diameter uh, cold rolled steel. And it, it, it pivots in two locations. I'll break this down a section at a time. One side obviously is <clears throat> is fixed and it you know it rotates about sort of that point. And in order to accommodate that rotation, I filled this side full of slots. Again, I didn't lay this out, um, so I didn't know where this could just be full of holes if you knew you had you know discrete angles that you wanted to cut. So maybe you had you know one, two, three, four, five degrees in both directions, and then maybe you had a couple of holes for you know different Morse tapers, whatever you expect um, you might come across. But here I just made I just milled a continuous slot so I can set it anywhere I wanted to in terms of an angle. The angle right now it's almost parallel, so this wouldn't cut any taper. I mean it would cut a little bit of a taper, uh, but you see these two are almost parallel. So that means when this is attached to the cross slide. The cross slide is just going to move parallel to the axis, to the axis of the uh, of the lathe. I mean, I notice that it's a little bit off center here, so it'll probably cut I don't know, five degrees or so. I cut this slot long enough to allow me 15 degrees either side of the the axis of the axis of the lathe, <clears throat> so I can cut you know 15 degree cones in either direction. Okay, so what I've done here is just uh, put some C-clamps on a piece of steel on my workbench and this mimics the, the lathe taper attachment bolted into the back of my lathe. Again, this structure would depend on you know how big your lathe is and where you have your attachment points. The only thing that's really important is that once you have this bolted down that this this bar, you know, whatever your your cross slide will be following ends up being at the same height as your as your cross slide. So you see I have some big bushings here that sort of raise this level up just so I get some clearance over 
you know, the back rails. The back of this barge has two holes in it, and I drilled and tapped two holes in the back of my cross slide. And so this little tail, let's call it, gets attached directly to the back of my cross slide and is rigid, you know, with the lathe or with the cross slide. Through here, there's just a small hole that I can get oil down into the bronze bushing. Um, if you watch the other videos, you can maybe see a little bit more of those details. And depending, you know, if you have a very small taper to cut and you run out of, out of range on your cross slide, you just take the screw out, move this thing closer. Because, I mean, your cross slide now has no more um, nut in it. So your handle is just going to be free spinning. You can't move it in closer to get a smaller diameter or pull it out further to get a larger diameter. So you have to adjust it, you know, depending on where you pin the uh, cross slide. Now you do have some adjustment if you rotate your top slide. So you rotate your top slide so that gives you sort of that fine adjustment in terms of diameters. And we'll bolt that on and I'll show you how all the parts move. I've loosened up just the two connections here. As I said before this you know is just able to move about 15 degrees either direction. There's a little bit of clearance cut everywhere to accommodate you know if you change this angle, then this, the distance between these hinge points change. You can see that bolt maybe moving to accommodate that. But if you build one of these, you know, details like that will become evident very quickly because you won't, you won't be able to change your angle. Now I can't get this, um, let's call it this follower block, off of here anymore because I decided to go with a welded construction. So if someday this wears out so much that I have enough slop that I can't cut consistent tapers, I'm going to have to cut the end off of here, make a new bronze bushing, reinstall it, and weld that back on. Um, weld the construction isn't really ideal, I suppose, for it's not very clean for a machine tool or machine tool accessories. Um, but like I say, I just, I just needed to get this done for something in particular I was, I was trying to do. And, and at the time, didn't want to spend way too much time you know, didn't want it a whole turn it into a whole other project. So here, essentially, you'd, you'd set the angle, kind of get it, you know, ballpark, and I'll show you how to set the angle exactly. Based on where your angle's set, you know, one of these holes hopefully lines up, and they get screwed down there. Now I have no fancy fine adjust, you know, to, to sort of tune in that last angle. My fine adjust knob looks like this. So I just loosen that a hair, tap it in and out, watch the indicator until I'm happy that it's set on the angle that I'm trying to cut. So just to really drive this home, I mean, since we're here talking about it, you have no control over where, where your tool moves once you've hooked up a taper attachment. So for example, if this bar, if we want to just go a little crazy, if this bar were, say, S-shaped, and you attached your cross slide to here and you took your nut out, this block is going to follow that S shape. And so consequently, let's assume this is your, your lathe cutting tool. Consequently, you, you're going to end up cutting an S shape on your workpiece. Because again, this, this shape here determines exactly what your tool is going to cut, at least ideally. And that's the fundamental premise of, say, something like a, a, a copy or a, a hydraulic lathe. I think they're called copying attachments. Um, be the same thing, I suppose, like a template follower for a wood lathe. You put some, you know, template here with whatever shape you're trying to duplicate, and your lathe tool just follows that along. Um, it's a little bit harder on a metalworking lathe because of the forces involved, but in theory, you could do the same thing. Have a template that's, I don't know, a heart shape or something, and just keep bumping your your tool post against it following that profile and that's that's what you would cut on your lathe. Alright I apologize about the mess on this lathe. Uh, it's about as clean as I can get it in the time I've got to make this video. But I've got the taper attachment bolted to the back of the lathe. You'll see that in the other video when the lathe was cleaner. I was able to get some some shots in the back but it's just bolted to the bed. Some people like to clamp onto the uh, the rails and that's fine. I just happen to have space available there 
obviously if it was higher I wouldn't have needed enough as much sort of clap trap up here but I've got that attached it's not set to anything it just firmly attached to the back of the lathe then I've removed the cross slide nut this is obviously very important because we don't want the cross slide screw to control anything here and this comes off my lathe just via this this is screwed in from the bottom on that screw there so I just you know sort of unwound it all the way to the back loosened that screw and this kind of just dropped out the bottom put that aside for now hopefully I won't lose it so now the cross slide is free to move in and out <clears throat> there's no connection anymore between the screw and, and the slide and I don't know if you can see this but the handle does nothing So the next step now is to attach sort of that drag link, that drag bar, between the taper attachment and the cross slide. Just so as, you know, the table moves, the, the carriage moves, the, the, the attachment is free to, you know, drag the cross slide in and out along that, that taper. So in my case, this is attached just with a couple of number six or M6, about quarter inch screws. I drilled and tapped into the back here. So now that's firmly attached to the cross slide. I can still move the carriage obviously. And the cross slide is still free to move in and out. Now we need to just attach that to the taper attachment. Before we do that, I'll just sort of show you why there's so many holes in that. This is a I think a Morse 3 taper um, that I cut a while ago. Still hasn't become anything. Now, I wouldn't usually mount this in a three jaw chuck. I mean, you want this to be exact as, you know, as possible. So either, I don't know, put it between centers or put it in a collet chuck or, you know, a four jaw chuck so you can kind of tune it in. Um, but just to illustrate what we're doing, that should be sufficient. So now if I were to bolt this say in that position I can no longer move the cross slide in and out. I mean the, 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 the taper attachments that's running the show. But I can't get to this diameter because you know this hand wheel is is no longer in action. So what I have to do is just you know, shove this in until I get, you know, sort of within the range that I'm trying to work. And as you're turning, you know, you may have to adjust this one or two times. And then we just bolt that in place. So everything's snug down. I've uh, swung a compound around. So now the taper attachment is controlling sort of the path that the tool is following. If I move this, it's roughly following that taper. Again, I just eyeballed it. And now the, the compound here, or the top slide, is controlling my depth of cut. So if I started obviously with the cylindrical diameter, I'd be out here. This would cut the taper. I'd move back, increment some depth of cut, you know, engage the table again, and it'll follow that, that angle. Just to recap, I've, I've put in sort of the piece I'm trying to copy here. This would be your first step before you put in the piece you want to cut in order you know, to set up your taper attachment, at least for my taper attachment because I have no graduations or, or anything on there. The taper attachment is set approximately you know, close to this angle and that's, you know, I pulled the, pull, the tool back and just sort of eyeballed that I'm keeping a constant distance apart so I know I'm close. The, Compound is turned around 90 degrees so I can control the depth of cut. And now I'm sort of ready to, to fine tune this angle. And we'll use a dial indicator for that. I happen to have a dial indicator attached to sort of a half tool rest. So I can drop that in, set it in place. Now you want to be careful for tapers 
um, especially if you're trying to copy something exact, to get that indicator right on center line. If you're a little bit high or a little bit low, you're going to be tracing a different taper angle than what you're actually trying to cut. So we've got the indicator on center line. Ideally you'll have mounted the piece that you want to copy in something more precise. If I, I mean I haven't tried this, but if I zero this up against that taper in a three jaw chuck, I expect quite a bit of run out. That's a few thou, so if this were set up in a four jaw, I could tune that out, you know, 90 degrees apart and, you know, a couple of positions just so I know that this is true. What I'm trying to copy is set up exactly on my lathe's axis. So now assuming we've got this zeroed into the axis, let's just check where our taper attachment is. I'm going to move in the indicator till I zero it out and just sweep across that taper. Now, as you can see, we're going to the left side of zero there. So if you think about that, that, that sort of means the, the material, it's as if the, the, the taper is moving away. That means, our cro that means our taper attachment is set a little too, it's a little too open. So as the carriage moves across, the indicator is moving away. So we'll just tap that with a hammer and try to get back into zero. So we iterate like that a few times, sweeping the taper, adjusting the taper attachment, sweeping the taper, adjusting taper attachment. I don't know, that's maybe hard to read. I'll turn off that light. So we'll just zero, I'll dial back out. And we're within about a thou, thou, thou and a half. So I just keep tweaking that, you know, I think a few more taps and we get that, we get that matched up exactly. At which point you could take your, your sample out, put in your raw stock and um, cut the taper. All right, so that's essentially it. Sorry if I dragged that out a little bit. Um, tried to make it as, as clear as possible. Certainly if there are any more questions, feel free to ask. Have fun.